Hello, how's everyone doing? Happy St. Patrick's Day from the state's capital. Got some green on, hope you do. Otherwise we're virtually pinching you. There you go, heard it here first. <laughs> yes. Well, we've had a busy week here in Helena. Uh, we got back and they really got back to work. The legislator, uh, legislature, I mean, they scheduled over 200 bills for hearing this week, which, you know, before Transmittal, there were many weeks where there was just over 100 heard per week. So we're back and we are back in action. Uh, we also had our board in town for their regular quarterly board meeting and had them up to uh, meet with the governor as well. So a lot of good things. And we are now at the end of the week. Yes, and we are getting ready for next week, which is going to be even crazier, it sounds like. It's Ag Week, so there's lots of extracurriculars, like things going on in the rotunda, um, special ag lunches. The stock growers are hosting a beef lunch. Um, we are sponsoring a booth for rangeland um, in the rotunda. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, we have lots of evening meetings, um, and a ton of bills are scheduled already. So Yes, normally in the week, like on Friday, we'll check for what's going on next week, and there's some bills scheduled. But already for next week, there's over 200 scheduled, which means there's likely more to come. So we already, we were thinking, oh, we have this big board in the house. And already I filled it up just a few minutes ago and almost every single day is packed to the gills, except for Wednesday, because um, the big, bu the budget will begin to be heard on the house floor, which will be a fairly in-depth process. Um, but we'll report on the ins and outs of that next week. So all of those things are a sign that we are, you know, ramping up and getting towards the end. We're... Uh, this will be spreading, you know, rumors and speculation a little bit, but there's talk of the legislature trying to wrap up in 80 days. We've heard 85 days. Uh, so there's going to be, there's going to be some movement, uh, a lot of movement in the next uh, few weeks. And I guess we'll see how likely it is. You know, yeah. if House Bill 2 um, starts moving quickly, uh, that will be another sign that we are um, going to get out of here, you know, sooner rather than later. Although I never hold my breath and that's just a little word of caution. There's always talk about trying to get out of here early, but there's just a lot of work that needs to be mm -hmm. done and a lot of things that finalize and settle towards the end. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. And just as a quick reminder, there's 90 legislative working days. So that means the work there, a legislative day accounts when they gavel in on the floor. So that's what will count. And that's, I think we're at 53 or 55. I don't know what day. 55, I, I guess, would make sense for today. I don't like to start <laughs> counting until 60, because otherwise it just feels like a long way. But um, we are moving quickly now, and we um, had several bills this week that you've probably heard us talk about before, because they were almost all repeats. So what do you have you want to share? Yeah, so one of the big bills that we've talked about a ton, but I'll talk about it again because it is important, uh, is House Bill 114. That comes from the Comprehensive Water Review this bill was heard quite a few weeks ago in the House um, in regards to, this one talks about the permanent change process, so it drastically decreases the timeline and puts some real structures um, on that timeline about how the permanent change process works for water rights come, with working with DNRC. Um, as Nicole mentioned earlier, our board was in town, which was great timing because our board member from District 2, J.M. Peck, I see that you're watching on Instagram, so welcome. Um, he was able to testify, and uh, as always, he did a great job in delivering the message about why this bill is really important for agriculture. Uh, that bill was heard in Senate Natural Resources this week. Uh, again, had all support. There was no opposition, some really good questions from the committee, and hopefully they'll take action on it soon. Um, and so again, a repeat, but very important. Uh, one of the things that we talked about this week with the governor was how how much we like really um, the how the, how well the comprehensive water review process works and how this is such a great product from it and how it brought the right people to the table and we had the best conversations that we were able to produce this kind of legislation that had such um, you know so much support behind it from so many different groups and from agriculture to the builders, to, um, you know, recreation, to everything. Everyone who uses water supports this bill, and for that, we're, we're very thankful that, um, as many of you know, water is complicated, and that we were able to have support on such a big deal. Absolutely. In that same vein, we heard, um, again, Senate Bill 85, which is Senator Lang's bill that um, updates the statute with regard to how Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks manages grizzly bears. This is all just one of the probably two or three steps that are in process right now for us to get closer to grizzly bear delisting. Um, we had a board member who was able to testify on that as well. 
Nick Corville from Charlotte uh, came and testified before House Fish, Wildlife, and Parks uh, yesterday, actually. And he's our YFNR chair and uh, lives up where there are grizzly bears and was able to give a great testimony on, you know, what it's like to have this animal around and just basically really made the case that there's such a presence, um, to, it's time for delisting and it's time to make, take those steps. He did a great job. Uh, he even got a question, uh, knocked it out of the park with his answer. And so it's uh, always fantastic to have uh, our members up here to be able to share your personal stories one-on-one uh, -on -one or you know in front of committees with legislators. So great news there. What else do we want to share? Yeah, I mean those are two of the big bills. There were some other bills that were heard. Um, I think all of them were bills that we ha that were on on their second go around. So um, you know this morning we talked about eminent domain. This afternoon we're going to talk about um, ag education, making sure that there's some funding, the right funding for ag education programs in schools all around the country. Um, and it, like, it was a busy week with all good stuff. Um, I'm blanking on what we did the beginning of the week. It seems like so long ago. It does <laughs> seem like a hundred years ago. But one thing, another kind of new issue, I guess we haven't talked about on here before, is this morning we supported um, Representative Vinton's uh, resolution. It's HJ10, and it basically reiter reiterates our continued support for our partnership, our sister state status, um, and our trade relationship with the country of Taiwan. Um, I was glad I made it up there because there was I was the only proponent, but there were no opponents. Um, that you know, it's a big deal for us to have more markets and um, especially international markets. Taiwan is a huge purchaser of Montana grain and also Montana beef. So uh, we were you know very happy to go in and support that resolution to continue to convey our support for this um, relationship. Yeah. Um, I'll just kind of highlight some of the things that, you know, the board got to meet with the governor and share some of our big priorities, some of the bills we've already discussed, some of the other ones, um, and they got to really, they continue to advocate for good things, for things that we are continuing to oppose, um, and to just really share some gratitude with the governor and his, his administration for what they've been doing, and I think it's just a really important thing to repeat, uh, really worth repeating that we have, we're really lucky to have a governor who he gets around the whole state to get to each county and visit all sorts of different um, Montanans, including a lot of farms and ranches. And so as we approach next week with Ag Week, uh, I think that's important. We'll, we'll be highlighting a lot of different stuff throughout the week. Um, but if you guys are celebrating Ag Week, how are you celebrating? Maybe it's just because you are a farmer and rancher and you celebrate Ag Day and Ag Week every day. Every day. <laughs> Um, well, I'm looking for questions and I don't see any, but we didn't do one of these during the transmittal break, so maybe we'll give a quick update on um, the status of a few other bills. Um, so as you know, um, or maybe you don't know, but just as a refresher, uh, in the first half of the session, there's what's called the transmittal deadline. There's actually several transmittal deadlines, but the big one is on the 45th day. Any general bills, so any bills that don't create revenue, have to be through their originating chamber by the 45th day. Oh my gosh, we just have the mailman showing up here, so I'm sorry if there's some noise. Um, but we, um, so by that point, things have to have passed their original house or they are, if they're on the table, they're considered dead. So two of those that we're um, pleased to report, actually all of the bills we've opposed except for one are, are currently dead. Um, so two of the ones that are dead are both of the right to repair bills, as you've heard me say before. These were um, unnecessary pieces of legislation that went beyond um, what our members have been asking for on this. And also, since we didn't get to report to you last week, uh, there's been more positive movement on this through the method that Farm Bureau has chosen to pursue. So we, as you know, chose to pursue an option of, of a private market discussion, a a private business negotiation. We were pleased to sign an MOU with John Deere in January, outlining uh, all of the things that now farmers and ranchers are able to do in, in the regard to right to repair with John Deere. Um, not just farmers and ranchers, all equipment owners, I always need to remember that. Um, and then just last week, we signed another one with Case IH New Holland. So that accounts for more than half of the uh, equipment, the ag equipment that 
is currently mm -hmm. in the country. So we're making really big progress. We're making really big leaps and bounds and we're really pleased about that. So those two unnecessary bills have both been tabled and are now dead. Likewise, the placarding bill was tabled early in the session. It is remained on the table and is now dead. As are um, three bills that were kind of in the um, public lands, access um, world or wildlife world. Those were, and they all have very similar numbers. Senate Bill 408, 418, and 428. Um, all by Senator Molnar. Uh, the first one sought to make changes to the palace.